Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Hope you are all doing very well. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at and diving into the details of a lithium polymer battery pack comparing voltage versus the capacity that we have remaining in the battery pack. I strongly recommend and encourage everyone as a radio controlled enthusiast to have a deep understanding of lithium polymer battery packs and that does apply to understanding the capacity remaining versus the voltage remaining. In the comment section below, let me know at what voltage do you stop operating your radio control car, boat, or plane. Now we're gonna be talking about the maximum, the minimum, the storage voltage, that percentage that I would recommend that you stop operating your radio controlled vehicle and more specifically and the big part of the today's video is looking at the voltage versus the actual capacity chart for a lithium polymer battery pack. Now it is quite important to also state this that not all lithium polymer battery packs are the same. You can have a lithium polymer battery pack that has a 3.70 volt nominal, which is exactly what we're gonna be covering here in this video, packs that do have that nominal voltage, but there are some that do not follow the same relationships that we're talking about today. In fact, we did a video not too long ago about Z battery packs and whether they are good or do they suck? If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below so you can check that video out. However, one of the things that we didn't really get deeply into within that video is that pack actually dumps quite a bit of its capacity below the typical percentages that we're gonna be discussing in this video. So the point here is that not all packs are the same and you do have to be careful about that. Let's get started and we'll jump right into the maximum voltage here of a lithium polymer battery pack. I'm gonna throw the chart on the screen so we can see that as we're talking about these specific values. So right here at the very top of our chart, we have 4.20 volts per cell in your typical lithium polymer battery pack. That is the maximum voltage that you want to have within each of the cells within your pack. Exceeding this value definitely puts you as well as your battery pack at risk and I would highly recommend not to do that as it's not safe to do so. Now if we jump right down to the bottom, somewhere around 3.2 to 3.3 volts per cell is going to be where your pack is fully depleted. It's at 0%. There might be a very small usable capacity remaining beyond this. However, for the most part, your pack is pretty well dead and it's not safe to depend on any amount of capacity that comes beyond this point. Even if you do notice, there is still capacity that does remain beyond this point. Now if we look in in the middle of our voltage range, you're gonna see between about 3.80, which is around the 40% mark, to about the 3.84 to 3.85. That's gonna be somewhere around 50 to 55% there, depending on what voltage specifically you're looking at. At these voltages, this is the ideal voltage to store your lithium polymer battery pack at. If you like having that pack around for a couple years, you definitely want to be doing this. If you were, for example, storing your battery at 100%, capacity, which is that 4.20 volts per cell, this is going to permanently damage it over time. Quite a while ago, I did a video and showed exactly what happens if you leave your battery pack at 4.20 volts per cell. Within about six months, the internal resistance of this specific pack that was left at 4.20 volts per cell increased significantly. And it was about three times higher than what it should have been. This ultimately means that the pack has received significant amounts of damage and it's not gonna perform as well as it once did before. Now, if we look at the chart where it shows the battery pack percentage remaining of capacity, and we compare that to voltage, you can see the relationship there. And the chart on the left-hand side has a graph that I've placed there that you can see on the right-hand side. When you're starting at 4.20 volts per cell, the first 5% that you take from that pack has quite the drop of voltage to get down to the 95% mark of capacity remaining. Remaining. And you can take a look at the next bunch of areas there, the next bunch of increments, and you have a decent amount of voltage before you get to that next increment 
of capacity. And then once you get to the 3.85 volts per cell, you can see that the difference between 3.85 versus 3.84 is 0 0.01 volts. However, you are dropping by around 5%. And it's quite tight right there around that voltage mark. And even if you go a little bit further, you'll notice that you hit around the 3.80. And when you extend even further past that, you can see how tight it remains for the next several increment of capacity. And even there at 30%, you are still not even at the nominal voltage that battery manufacturers are specifying for this specific pack. In fact, a 3.70 volt per cell is quite low on the actual capacity remaining of that battery, which is quite interesting because the typical voltage that our pack is going to see is going to be much higher than 3.7 if we're specifically talking about the resting voltage. Now obviously when the pack is under load, the loaded value is going to be lower and maybe this is more so where the nominal voltage is coming into play. At the beginning of the video, I asked you what kind of resting voltage do you typically stop your radio control vehicle at the end of a run? Well, this is an important mark if you want to extend the lifespan of your battery pack and maximize that lifespan. Generally and typically speaking, you want to stop with 20% capacity remaining in the pack and the voltage that you want to stop there corresponds with that value and you can see that on the screen right there. There's a couple different ways that you're able to measure the voltage to first understand what kind of capacity that you have remaining within your battery pack as well as making certain that you don't exceed that 20% remaining capacity of your battery. The first way would be if you're driving a radio control car, you would stop that radio control car in front of you, remove the body, and then use a voltage checker to measure the voltage of each of the cells within that pack. If you are above the mark that you're looking for, then you can make a few more passes and then bring the car back in and repeat these steps, making certain that you're not going below that 20% mark. If you're doing this with a radio control plane, the process is quite quite similar. However, what you're going to have to do is land the plane and then bring it over to you by taxing it over and measuring the voltage from there. This is going to give you an understanding of whether or not you can extend your flight time in order to make certain that you're not going beyond that 20% remaining capacity in the battery. Another way to do this is using telemetry. Using telemetry is probably one of the easiest ways to do this. However, it is also one of the more expensive ways to do this because you are going to need the technology to end up giving you that feature so that you can review the information right on the radio control that you are using. Now for radio control cars, this is going to be quite easy to do. You simply just stop the vehicle anywhere you want to stop it. You can then read the voltage because we are needing to make sure that we're reading the resting voltage and not the actual loaded voltage. For radio control the airplane, I had it programmed in one of my planes that every time I came to around the 0% throttle mark, it would simply just read off the voltage of the pack right there. And as I mentioned before, I strongly believe this is an important topic to familiarize familiarize yourself with the voltages of the battery pack and the capacity that is remaining with the pack as well. Knowing this relationship is going to give you a really good understanding as to where your pack is every time you check the voltage of that pack. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.